But you're never quite a flower You feel more just like a weed Hello everyone, this is Gail and Lee for another edition of Quarantine Concerts and um, I'm so glad to see you here. A lot of people from all over the world, um, Chris and Vernoff, and um, I don't know your real name, but you're from Scotland, DWPA Blue Song. I don't think that's probably your legal name. Um, and Kim and Gail and Robert, thanks so much for coming, everyone. Um, I am so excited to introduce you to some really beautiful and fun music uh, by my friends, Complicated Animals, Monica and Chad. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves to people who may not know about your music? Sure, I'm Monica, and uh, this is Chad, obviously. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so we're a Brazilian-American duo. We live in the Napa Valley, and um, our music is uh, heavily influenced by bossa nova, because I grew up back and forth between Brazil and the States, and um, always had a passion for it, and Chad as well has a, has a passion for that. So we kind of put our talents together, I guess, or our interests, and came up with our style. That's awesome. So you actually did kind of bounce between countries i was wondering where you le- is that where you learned how to play the music and like were you raised on the language of portuguese mm-hmm. or is that something you learned because of the songs uh no yeah my mom's from from brazil she's from the amazon area in the north of brazil a city called belém oh. and uh so i grew up all, all my life going there i have a dual citizenship and we would spend pretty much every summer there and i was really influenced by the music and and the people so cool. And then Chad, what's your connection? Like how, because you met Monica or were you already playing that kind of music when you met? Uh, I always loved all different styles of music. So especially Latin stuff. Uh, I'm originally a drummer, so I just oh, gravitated cool. towards rhythms and stuff like that. Loved it. That's awesome. I didn't know you were a drummer originally. Yeah. Huh. We studied a lot of um, jazz. Yeah. So he was, he's actually a really good uh, drummer. And jazz. He, uh, when we first met, um, we met through music, and he was—he started playing. We played, formed a quartet in Chicago, and he, he was actually playing drums with me at the time. That's so cool. Wait, so then where were you both raised? Like, well, I know you bounced back and forth, but what cities were you both raised in? Uh, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, originally. Okay. Then yeah. you moved to. Yeah, then I moved up to Chicago and met her there. Okay. She was living there. Yeah, and I was—I was actually from uh, Michigan. Oh, um, right. I, it's a weird mix. My uh, from. My dad's from Holland, Michigan, near Grand Rapids. Okay. And yep. then he was in the Peace Corps, met my mom in Brazil. And so I, I lived most of the time in uh, Michigan. And then I moved to Chicago. That's cool. Well, so for people who don't know how we got connected, it's kind of funny. You guys are like a staple of my touring life. Um, I met them at a show in Jacksonville. We were playing on the same bill, and they were really, really nice. and ended up hanging out and chatting a lot that night and then the next time we were in Los Angeles we're like hey we moved to Los Angeles do you want to hang out and so we hung out did we do a show together there too or just hang out that time I'm trying to remember Uh, that time we we went to see you play at Hotel Cafe yep 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 that's what it was and then I heard they recently also moved up to the Napa Valley well not recently like a year and a half ago now up to the Napa Mm -hmm. Valley area so um you guys are like the definition of independent artists like making it on music like how has the moves like are the moves because of the music usually or just because you're like whatever we don't need to be in any one place at any one time why not move like what's the what sparks the moves uh well probably my my nomadic spirit (laughs) (laughs) yeah coupled with uh well the music actually uh we we loved living in chicago but uh for we first moved after chicago we went to florida and then, uh, because, it, you know, things are all the time there. It never gets cold. So we found yeah. that we could work year round there and then uh, play, we let play a lot of shows. And then so we moved to, to California, the same thing. And the move up here was inspired by um, we were in L.A. and we thought that was the place to be for us in California. But um, after touring around California, every time we'd come here, we kind of find, found that it was so suited to our vibe and to our style and every time we'd play, it would immediately immediately lead to another show or an offer. Like, do you want to play this event or this? Or it seemed like we could make a living here. Yeah, um, doing this. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. I mean, LA is funny because I I still really like it. Like every time we go, I like it. But it would be really hard, I think, to be a working musician. I mean, I had to. I like the last gig I did was at like a. Oh, we did that one together. You did it together. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. At like I know. this you don't coffee make shop. Money because you don't get paid anywhere else. And even there, it was like $100 or something. It was 
a very interesting uh, culture where if you, I guess it's good to grow your craft maybe, but it would be hard mm -hmm. to, if you're already a musician, to just no. decide oh, I'm going to live out there. I don't know if I could do it. I think most no. people probably yeah, can't. Yeah, we found we were just traveling a lot from from there. We tried there, honestly. We kept trying to, to perform like for, for a living, but the, the places don't want to pay you. And yeah. they also, there's even more, the places will even say like, oh, Billy Bob Thornton played here. You can pay us to play here. I know, that <laughs> what, happened what a couple of times uh, <laughs> with me too. I was like, Oh, we sold 22 tickets, but not 25, so I don't get paid. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a very, it's a intense, it's an intense place. But mm -hmm. um, well, I'm glad you're in a place that feels more suited to you. Um, and and so during quarantine, have you been doing a lot of online shows or just playing outside? I mean, you do live in a better climate. It's snowing right now where I am, so you're yeah. probably not. Yeah, we have done some some online things. We've been doing some like more. I mean, here and there, you know, just we've been doing like because of all the wineries here, we've been teaming up to do some of the, the online. They'll do an online wine tasting. Oh, so we'll cool. provide a little diversity to the you know when they they'll talk and then let people sip while we're playing a song or something and uh, some things like that. But not so much actually. Like we were used to playing like so many shows and then it, since March thirteenth, I mean that was really the wall when it became yeah. Okay, no, you're not. You don't do this anymore. Okay? Yeah, I know. God, help. I, I know. It was. It's still weird. I mean, I've really enjoyed doing these shows, but it is definitely not like the same level of uh, either structure or like yeah, income generation. It's pretty intense to switch. Well, I'm glad that you have managed to like keep going and keep playing. Do you plan to go back to touring when you can? Yeah, we we do. You know, okay. we, we, one thing we have been using this year, I mean, almost a year now, it seems uh, we, we've been uh, recording our album, our next one. And so we've been devoting our time to that a little bit um, or a lot more, you know. Yeah. No, Nothing that's to cool. do about that. You know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's about the only thing you can do right now. Um, mm -hmm. So, Chris, before you play your first song, Chris wants to know, what are your favorite artists or your most prominent influences? Uh, well, lately I've been listening to a guy named Georgie Bain. Um, he's from Brazil. That's a great one. Um, what do you think? I mean, we, I feel like our... our, our, our influences are so diverse everything you know we listen to a lot of the beatles everything we listen to is mainly uh most of the stuff's old, old. like from the 60s a lot of french pop uh french yeah. pop from the 60s like new wave uh and uh what else yeah like a lot of that stuff i guess and uh, cinema like uh, playlists i love uh ennio morricone and i love all the the good the bad and the ugly the spaghetti western music and okay Herb Alpert. Um, so I feel like I'm kind of an old so We both are in that. We're just always regard. trying to explore stuff. Yeah. yeah. But we like new stuff too. We just, you know, sometimes we want it to have substance or seem kind of timeless when we listen to something. And a lot of times things seem really trendy or, you yeah. know, in the moment. And then I'm just kind of like, that, that doesn't really appeal to me for some reason. I try to like it or I'm like, okay, what's everyone like about this? But I try to give everything a chance though. I do like the timeless stuff though. I agree with you. So two quick questions before you play your first song. Um, if somebody was going to get into like French new wave of the 60s, what would be like an album that you could recommend? Because I don't know if everybody's going to be like, oh, of uh, course, my favorite. So, uh, search, uh, oh, Francoise Hardy is one of the, the artists that's really that we love. Um, or Serge Gainsbourg. If okay. you look him up, he's just amazing. He did a, you know, some, he collaborated with um, Brigitte Bardot and Jane Birkin, who was his wife later. And uh, his daughter is actually a musician. Uh, but, yeah, I feel like those are good albums to start with, or artists to start with. That's cool. And then somebody else had a question. Do you have a name for your new album yet? I have a little th something I'm toying with, but the, nothing that's like solidified or, you know okay. what I mean? So I'm, I'm afraid to say it because what if I change it? I'm like, I'm so known to change my mind that it'll be, it's probable. I, I feel like we have to <laughs> do the cover image and like listen to the whole thing back before we can really title I it. I agree. Anyway. Yeah. It is one of the things, one of the last things I do is name it, to be honest. So yeah. I agree with you on that. It's like pets for me. For Like, I have to live with something. I don't know how people name a baby when it would, like, if I ever had a kid, if it would just, like, I'd be like, I have to live with you and see your mannerisms first, you know? Yeah, that would be weird. To, what if you named it and then you're like, oh, that does not fit at all. This baby You're not a George. Like what? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, I am so pumped for people to hear you. Do you want to introduce your first song? I'm going to get off the screen and mute sure. my... 
you might hear me, you guys, but they won't hear me making it okay. if I cough or something. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not no in the thing. Okay, so uh, yeah, give us a little input on what you're about to play. Okay, so this first song we're going to be playing is in Portuguese, and it's um, an original bossa nova that we wrote for our new album that's coming out, and it features some flute. And oh, it's called Quem Sou Eu, um, which means Who Am I? One sec, I think the uh, I think that the um, theme song might start again because I forgot to turn it off. So I'm gonna turn it off. One second. Yep. 
totally did. But now we're back. Okay, so I turned it off. It won't happen again. Um, that was beautiful. So what is that Thank song you. about? Ah, that's a song about actually uh, when you're in a relationship and you say something to someone, but you later you regret it. You're like, oh, why did I say that? Like when you're mad or something. And you, you treat, uh, so it's a love song about uh, who am I to treat you that way kind of thing when you're, you're kind of lamenting that. Uh, I guess it, it sounds better in Portuguese if I, you know what I mean? Is that about like living with someone in quarantine basically then? Just Probably, kidding. yes. No. Kidding. It was pre quarantine, it was written pre quarantine, but <laughs> I guess it applies more than ever right now. Yeah, no kidding. Wait, so did you write that one? Mm-hmm. Oh, so cool. Okay, I wasn't sure. Do you play a lot of traditional bossa nova or do you write your own almost always? We're, or always? Pretty, yeah, we we'll always write our own. Uh, there's cool. like only a, a couple that we do that are. Uh, everyone we get all the requests and when someone knows everyone's like do you play gr- the girl from Ipanema you know and we do do that but yep. that's that's the one everyone knows here that's so. like your free bird version that is that's the one yeah. that we get a tip for you know okay that's yeah the, I oh, know. Yeah, we'll put a 20 in your tip jar if you play yep. that one for us that's funny <laughs> I know everybody uh asked me for the devil went down to Georgia which I don't know actually mm-hmm. or the orange blossom <laughs> special which I also don't know should probably learn would make more tips <laughs> No, the so. Jeff Thrill Tell thing with the flute for me, it's always like, can you, I'm like, I honestly don't, I've never played that. I'm really sorry. It would be really messy if I even attempted it. <laughs> it would we don't sound know. bad and you would not want to tip me even if you wanted to now. Um, <laughs> so somebody has a question that's pretty specific, but I'm glad to hear people are curious. Um, can you ask Monica what the make and model of her flute is? And if it has a solid silver body and head joint, they sound very good. Mm-hmm. So I don't know so what that a, even means. So educate. Yeah, so it is. It's an open hole uh, Yamaha professional flute. Um, I don't know. The, if I don't. I don't know. Like the number. Did that, is that what they want? Or uh, I don't know. Just <laughs> maybe it's, it's. They might it's know about silver flutes. though. It is silver. Are they I mean, not all like silver? Mm, no. So my my the one I think I first started on was a, a student model, like a uh, an Armstrong with a you know closed hole, and I think that was is I think that's stainless steel, I believe. Yeah, oh wow. It's, it's no? probably. Uh, or no, brass. maybe am I wrong? I think it's okay. brass, but they, they <laughs> usually they're plated with silver, but that one's solid. Yeah, this is, yeah, this was like a present from my parents after I, because I studied for, since I was a little kid, and um, I took a, less, a lot of lessons and everything, and then uh, this was given to me my, by my parents as like a gift for all those years of putting into my time. Of in, You're just kidding. Yes, <laughs> torment, <laughs> like forced <laughs> lessons. <laughs> well, it yeah. paid off because it sounds beautiful, and I bet it's nice to be able to kind of, bounce between instruments and vocals and yeah that's cool. oh yeah it is you know yeah. I, I, when we first started playing together actually we I wasn't using the flute that much and then I kept you know I took a little time off of it and then it, it felt a little rusty coming back and then I you know but it's been a number of years that I've been using it again and I'm really glad to, to have you know actually picked it back up you know yeah no it's really cool it adds a lot um so so Chad you can obviously tell your guitar skills are Top notch. Did you study guitar in school or have you just been playing forever? No, I just, I always grew up like, uh, you know, playing drums and then also, you know, probably less guitar when I was little, but, you know, I always had it in my hands. So, so I, the think, drums. I think I, I got more serious about it like when we met because we started writing music together. But you would, uh, he, he is, he's actually, he's really good with finger picking. And I, th- I think you must have done a lot of that growing up, did you? Yeah, I always just okay. like noodle around. I'd be <laughs> sitting on the couch and. Yeah, his dad plays, uh, so he would always, uh, there's like little video, there's video of him, like when he's a little kid, like three year, you know, picking up the guitar and uh, playing with his dad. Cute. Yeah. Well, so, okay, so you were a drummer primarily, but you did kind of have guitar access at the same time when you were playing yeah. drums a lot? Yeah, because my dad played. I think I just okay. focused more on drums initially. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Do you ever play drums now or not really? Um, yeah, for anything that we're recording, I'll do like all the percussion oh, yeah. and stuff. Okay. But I mean, we do more percussion than like real drums. Okay. I'd love to play more. <laughs> yeah, our place actually, the you know we have, we're we have a little like a little cottage I would say that we rent. So um, small house, we don't have that much space. So we had like the drum set up, but it took so much room in the studio up that we just kind of like set it up when we need to now. And you know, yeah. we mainly play like a percussion stuff. That's well, Boston Nova has a lot of like auxiliary percussion, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've been collecting a lot of that too. We've been we just got some really cool like Spanish castanets from Ooh. like I don't know how old those things are. They look like from the from the fifties or forties or I don't know. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, when I was on the last album I recorded in a studio was in two thousand eighteen, The Learning How to Stay, and one of the tunes 
features a castanet. It was our recording engineer. Mm-hmm. He's like, I know what we'll add. This will add a cool sound. So he's got a music credit for castanets on one track. It's pretty cool. <laughs> but they oh, do. Cool. They have nice. a cool sound, and it actually does add. It can be really helpful to have like mm-hmm. a little little pop or whatever. So yeah. cool. Yes. <laughs> so what is your next? song because i want to make sure people get to hear all three of your beautiful tunes oh okay i'll so i'll make sure I get out of here while you introduce it yeah so uh, this next song is called push me away and it's from the first album that we released together it's under it's under my name monica da silva um brasilissima is the name of the album and uh, yeah so this is push me away <clears throat> that was lovely everybody is like you'll have to go back uh or before the show ends because it kind of comes down for about a day and then they go back up but Mm. before the show ends you should go check out 
all the beautiful comments. People really oh. like it. Um, thank you so much, you guys. Yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah, people are. I just love them. Wonderful voice. This is beautiful. So, and then uh, got a bit of an early 70s feel when the music was incredible. So many uh-huh. old and new things mixing together. Probably that timeless vibe we're talking about earlier. I oh, think cool. that's kind I of know, the. We love that. Chad's always like really into sound and everything, and he's always talking about the pinnacle of recording, right? What did you say? Yeah, I mean, I love. The set early. I love 50s for things. 80s. I love the 60s for Seven, the Early 70s. Yeah, 70s. 70s is great, yeah. What do you think of, okay, totally random. Oh, wait, I'm not even in the screen. <laughs> I'm going to get good at this someday. Okay, I'm back. I was never really anywhere. At least they could hear me. Um, So what is, like, what do you think of, like, the Simon and Garfunkel? Have you ever listened to, like, a dangling conversation, the way they use orchestra to mm-hmm. kind of make mm-hmm. sound? Like, or in Old Friends, the orchestra became, like, part mm-hmm. of the soundscape. I don't know if you've ever listened to those particular no, song I, think, I feel like that's not what I'm most familiar with but I, I, I'm gonna go listen to it after right after this yeah. <laughs> but I, I do love Simon and Garfunk and I do love orchestration and stuff I, I love like old orchestration on those old songs you know all those like old old even bossa novas when the and I, I would love to do something with that yeah um well for those of you who are watching um that brings me to a point that I wasn't intending to bring up until now, but like um, I'm doing at 315, anyone who is a Patreon supporter, so a part of my Patreon team, at 315 Central Time, which is basically about five minutes after this ends, um, we have a Zoom session where we're going to talk about music, and one of the questions is a song that changed your life, and the reason I bring that up is because Simon and Garfunkel, the way they used orchestras in a few of their songs in particular, they became like a sound effect and I just had never heard that before and I remember thinking like that's so evocative like it makes you hear like car horns even though it's a symphony playing like it was really cool so that that was kind of the way that recording can can take you to a totally different level if it's done really well is very fun obviously I mean live music is obviously perfect in its own way but recording you can kind of kick it up a notch in a way that if you're really yeah. careful about it, it's really interesting, I think. Yeah, we, we love that. We love you know, recording and just, it's just fun, you know, it's such a creative process. It's so so fun just trying stuff, you know? Yeah. So we're, we're, yeah, so we're so glad to have our own recording equipment here because it's just fun. We don't have to be on the clock. Oh, so you're not having to go to like a studio and pay for it. That's cool that you can, I'm learning how to do that now, but I, I did go to a studio because recording used to really, intimidate me and this year has taught me a little bit more about like it's not actually totally rocket science but I still like having somebody else's ear involved mm-hmm. at least in some part of the process you know yeah so, yeah that, that's it is it's, it is that is the hardest part I feel like with you don't have anyone else's ear because you uh you, you you know like if when Chad's you know engineering and mixing and doing all that stuff it's hard for him to look then again you don't you say like as as the artist or to hear the song yeah, actually you see pieces yeah, i mean you have to like <laughs> take a step back and listen to the actual song because sometimes you'll zone into these little details and you got to think to yourself like is that about matter? the song as a whole you know yeah it's the most yeah. important thing have it's, you ever seen that comic of the skeleton um sitting at a mixing board and it says just one more take or whatever and it yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of how it gets at it, some is. Point, it gets so. like that like no I, I think i could get this better man and then yeah. you, sometimes you end up picking the first thing you did because just the like, energy you know to it or, you're like oh crap i just wasted five hours of my life but exactly. whatever yeah, that's, that's gone <laughs> not gonna get that yeah. back yep. i do that a lot i'm trying to stop yeah i know it's it's a tough one it's that's <laughs> you know it's creative that's part of it so well i'm i'm really excited for people to hear your last song this is also in mm. portuguese right um mm-hmm. And I'm pumped for this instrument. Do you want to introduce it? I'll get off sure. screen. So I'm going to be playing a little melodica in the middle of this song. Um, this song is called Sempre Aqui, or Always Here. And it's featured on our um, Complicated Animals EP in this game.
E o vento me leva pra longe Longe de ti Sempre aqui Contigo Sempre aqui Contigo Sempre aqui Sempre assim Contarei perfeito La fue camino, la fue But for us we'll always know we'll have This moment Love nothing and things may change But for us we'll always stay right here Sempre aqui contigo Sempre aqui contigo Sempre aqui contigo Sempre assim com teu reto perfeito Tá, 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 tá demais Tá, 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 meu bem Tá, 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 tá demais Não vai That's beautiful. I could totally listen to that all day. That's so great. People are like, Thank wow, you. so relaxing. What a chill vibe. So good job. And then somebody wants me to ask you if you like 80s music or if you're not so influenced by 80s music. Yeah, we actually, we love it. Actually, I love it. Not, not so much Chad. But I know, not so myself. much me either. This is why I'm <laughs> yeah. asking. It's kind of a no, joke. I, I you know do like some it. of the stuff, you know, and there's a lot. Actually, I feel like uh, there's, there is a lot of some 80s stuff I like. But there's also, I can see how some of the production is super duper cheesy. When you go back, you think that's a great melody. If only it were produced differently or yeah. wish I could go back and produce them now or, you know. Yeah, I, uh, I had to play Belinda Carlisle in a play one time, which I'm not mm -hmm. a big fan, except for we, had, we got to redo the songs in our own way. And then I was like, mm -hmm. okay, these are actually good songs. Fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, and the melodies, like the melodies yeah. are hooky or they're cool, but then yeah. like some of the productions are like those like... Yeah, the worst like, keyboard yeah. sounds. The keyboard. No, Can't yeah, but like hear. if I think about Pet Shop Boys or something, there's a vibe to that, or this, you know, the Smiths, and you know, this, you're this kind right. Of I should, I, like I, that kind I of stuff, dismissed cure. it. Yep, I know. And my my like brother, my brother was obsessed with uh oh what band, you know, freaking what is that one called? Paul, what's the band that Ben's obsessed with? Journey? No, not Journey. What is that one? Uh, they play like you know. The strangers, uh, you know, like oh my gosh, never mind. It'll come to me like at the end of the show. Do you know what song I'm talking about? It probably is Journey. I think, but that might be 70s. I don't even know. I don't even quote me, you guys. This is not delete this part of your memory. Um, so last question before I let you go is, um, are you on a Puda Mayo CD? Are you are right? Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's under my name, Monica Da Silva. It's on the Brazilian beat when they released so cool. them. Yeah, it's, it was one of the songs on our, our first album was featured on that. Was that kind of like, how did that come about? Because that seems like a really big deal. I mean, maybe it's not, but to uh, me, I, I love those CDs. So Yeah, no, I love those. I, we, I, we've always been familiar with those. Um, we sent our music to um, our first album to this radio DJ in Texas and Austin. 
um, he, he has a Latin American music show, and he uh, he suggested, hey, this stuff I think it could go on Putumayo. You should submit it to them, and so we we did, and then we actually heard back for once, and you know, that was that's cool. That's so cool. That's awesome. And that was quite a few years ago, you said. Yeah, that was uh, 2011. Okay, cool. And so you're traveling whenever it happens to be okay to travel again. Um, mm-hmm. So people can do you do mostly regional like California, or do you do national too? National, uh, actually, you know, national, and then even into Canada. Cool. So, yeah. Yeah. Canada's but we, we tour, and uh, we tour and then release music under um, so far under my name, and then also under Complicated Animals. So if people want to check us out online, I mean, um, if they look up Monica De Silva and also Complicated Animals, you'll see cause we we release um, we write different styles of music, so we we have like two ways to release that. That's with cool. Having both projects. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I have your links in the description. And then people, if you enjoyed their music, um, I'm splitting the tips with them today. So um, please (laughs) give a tip. They could, we could all use it at this time. None of us are doing a lot of (laughs) playing out. So um, um, if you can, that would be really appreciated. And they will uh, be very grateful for that. And check out their music and their YouTube and all the places where you can find them. Um, Bandcamp is a great one. Do you have your stuff on Bandcamp, right? We do. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm just glad that you guys could showcase your beautiful sound. So thank you for being here mm-hmm. today. Yeah, thank Aww. you so much for having me. I miss you. I well, can't I miss wait you to too. see you in real life again me someday. Too. <laughs> I can't wait to just like be around people. It's this, <laughs> well, this, thing, this is making me want to like, after this, I'm normally not into this, but I want to go to like Ibiza or something and jump into like a big dance party. Like, <laughs> we're you're just like, sweaty people. Just, like, <laughs> You're like, well, maybe I'll wait a couple months for that. But exactly. So, so you yeah. guys are obviously a couple, so people don't know. But you did not start. You started playing together, and then you started dating Actually, after that, right? Or the other way around. Both things came together. We don't really know what started, but we met <laughs> through for music. We met because of music, and then actually pretty much right away uh, started dating and never stopped. It's probably <laughs> pretty music. cool to live with someone where you can make music i mean i bet that's a fun part of the relationship even like as it grows Mm because you can always be bouncing ideas off each other and that's cool yeah yeah Yeah. it is cool yeah well it's cool because yeah it's it's, that's that's you know in the the past when you know you date someone who wasn't in music or wasn't able to accompany you on your journey it seemed like he was i was being i felt pulled you know a little bit like you're gonna go practice you're gonna go do that i felt like you're taking time away from the other person but now we're together 24 7. I mean, yeah, so are we. <laughs> There's ups and downs, folks. There's ups and downs. Yeah. Well, yes. Um, well, thank you for being here. And we are going to uh, switch over. I'm going to do three songs before the end of the show. And then remember, if you want, I think you guys might be able to pop in, right, to the Zoom. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you are a Patreon member, remember that today is the Patreon Zoom. Starts at 3.15 Central Time. And Monica and Chad are going to join us for a bit. And we're going to talk about the role music plays in our lives and kind of some important touchstones for that. And if you have any actual questions that you want to ask face-to-face, that would be a great time to chat with them. So if you are already a member of my Patreon, you, you already have the link. I sent it in a message. And if you aren't, um, if you join the Patreon, it's in the most recent post. So you can come join us. So thank you so much, you guys. Take thank care. You. And uh, you. see you in a little bit. Cool. Okay, cool. Sweet. Awesome. So I'm going to get set up. But first, uh, so I guess, yeah, you guys can log out, I suppose. Uh, I'm going to switch. Send me, uh, oh, yeah, link. and then I'll email you the link as soon as I'm done here. So a little okay. after three. So okay. sweet. See you guys soon. See ya. Bye. Okay, so I'm so glad that you guys got to hear them. Um, I have a few real quick uh, updates for you before I play. First of all, I've been painting um, because what do you do in quarantine? I'm, I'm hand-making all my... Christmas presents this year. Um, this means uh, good Yule means uh, Merry Christmas in Swedish and Norwegian. And so I made some of these little gnomes. I thought they were really fun. Um, and also I want to show you the snow because it's gorgeous right now. So Polly, do you want to help me? Because um, it's snowing and it's very Christmassy. Can you see it? Uh, maybe turn that a little. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Isn't that nice, you guys? Love it. Anyway, so beautiful. Um, so beautiful snow right now. And 
I'm going to get set up to play you a couple songs, but I have two announcements I want to make before I switch over. First of all, this show is being sponsored by my very first Patreon sponsor, Sean Anderson. Um, she is a shooting star patron, and um, I announce... If they have anything they want me to announce during the show, that's part of being a patron. And so um, this Friday at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific Time or 9 o'clock Central Time, you can tune in. Um, Sean and her family are a part of a Christmas Carol radio drama reading um, with Ariel Theatrical. And there's a link in the video description if you want to join in. It's a free event um, it's on Friday, the 18th of December at 7 Pacific, 9 Central. And her family will be a part of that. And I just think it's, I love the Christmas Carol, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. And I love old time radio. So I am very pumped um, that she will be doing that. And I just want to say thank you to her for sponsoring the show. I have not had a sponsor um, yet. So this is a pretty big deal for me. And then also on December 23rd, in the link um, in the description, if you haven't gotten a ticket yet for the Christmas Carol sing-along on December 23rd at 7 o'clock Central Time, um, that is going to be really fun. My parents are going to be singing and playing um, music with me, and we're just going to do a Christmas Carol sing-along on Zoom. So um, join us if you can. It's all donation only, and we're splitting donations with a venue in Duluth called Wusso's Coffee House, and then with the Northern Links Food Bank, and then a third will go to me and any other artists that I have involved. So now I'm going to play for you, okay? Here we go. See you soon. Backing up. Oh, yeah, do the mic first. I forgot about that part. I'll have to raise it a little. Yeah, I think that should work. Hello, you guys. Okay, so I'm going to get my violin and play. Yes, Jamie, thanks for putting the information in the chat for that radio drama. I'm super pumped about that. I bought a little, well, it's free, but I reserved a ticket online already because I love, I'm reading a book right now called uh, Mr. Dickens and His Carol, and it's kind of about... Uh, it's a fictional account of the writing of A Christmas Carol, so fits very well with the season. So, here is my first song of the day. Chris, I can't do I Wait today because I already sent the lyrics into the captioner, but I will be able to do it next week, so I'll put that on the list for next week. Um, this first tune is A Christmas Carol called The Holly and the Ivy. Lower my chair a bit to turn it off. <laughs> Thank you. 
There you go. Um, that is the Holly and the Ivy. Um, and I saw three ships come sailing in. I really like doing medleys of Christmas carols because they often fit together really le- nicely and they're kind of fun to do. Um, next week's show is going to be all Christmas carols because I have two former fiddle students coming in um, and they will be um, playing Christmas carols for you and then I'll do a few too of my own. So it's going to be a really fun week. Um, and so the next song I'm going to do is Amazing Grace. So here we go.
Hello. Um, okay, so that was Amazing Grace um, and Down to the River to Pray, another medley. Um, and so I am very glad that you could stick around with me for that. I have one more song for you today, and it's a sing-along. Um, I haven't done this one in a while, so I thought it'd be fun to end on Birdsong um, because some of you are newer to this show. And so I am grateful that you're here and thought it'd be fun if we could sing together. So what is going to happen? And some of you already know, some of you are new. Um, what's going to happen is I'm going to set up a loop and then we are going to come in together and we're going to sing this line twice together. We're going to sing, Bird, why do you sing? Fate has clipped your wings. So the words are, bird, why do you sing? Fate has clipped your wings. And we're going to sing that twice together, and then we are going to, you're going to keep going at home. I know I won't be able to hear you, but uh, I trust that you will sing at home because we'll be doing a duet. I do a bunch of other stuff, and then you keep going um and then um at the end we will end together so this song is about um even if you feel limited by society or your own body or anything else that your spirit is always free so um i thought it was appropriate for this time of year um darkness uh darkness is here and so time to be free in our own minds i guess so um here we go this is bird song i'm let's practice it once at home together we're gonna sing Bird, why do you sing? Fate has clipped your wings. Okay, so hopefully that goes well for you at home. And so please uh, sing along with me to Bird, Why Do You Sing? Fate has clipped your wings and then you keep going. Carry the melody all the way through. So... Thank you so much for being here. I am going to start the tune. Yes, thank you, Chris. Warm up your tonsils. Prepare. Everybody do your breathing exercises, your singing vocal warm-ups. Uh, yes, be prepared. Here we go. Make me feel 
wheel, make a burn in the sky, fly running around and I can't fall down. You make me feel, make me feel so free, like I just came awake, not afraid to be. You make me feel like a burn in the sky, fly running around and I can't fall down. You make me feel, make me feel so free, like I just came awake, not afraid to be. Burn, why do you sing? Fate has put your queen. Burn, why do you sing? There you go, guys. That is Bird Song. Um, thank you for those of you who sang along. I really hope that some of you at least were singing along. Um, and I am just very appreciative of you for coming to this show today, for listening to Complicated Animals. If you enjoyed their music, please think about leaving a tip. They will be split kind of to pay for captions uh, on my end and then to go to the artists for them. I really appreciate um people donating for them to get some support during this time go check out their music um i will be back with you next week for the christmas edition of quarantine shows we'll be doing all christmas carols next week um, with some kids it's going to be really fun um and some students of mine they were fiddler fiddle students of mine um and 23rd, please check out the links in the video. 23rd, join us for the Christmas Carol sing along. And also, thank you again to Sean Anderson um, if you for being a sponsor of the show. And if you'd like to support their Christmas story, it's on Friday the 18th at 7 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Central. So thank you. Take very, very good care, you guys. Um, see you at the Patreon Zoom in about 10 minutes. So I'm going to go get ready for that. Um, if you are a Patreon team member, please, please join us. Take very good care and happy holidays. Stay safe this week, okay? Thanks. Bye.